legendary African Americans through extensive research in this warming unique style of storytelling. Doug co produced this documentary, and uh, he's going to do a little brief intro to some of the people that are here today, and then we'll do a QA. One of the things that I thought would be cool about this screening was that we would revisit out the documentary. And I'm very happy that some of our cast members were able to come out this afternoon. And so what I'd like to do is introduce my filmmaking partner. And, uh, we, we've had an opportunity to do, I think, three, maybe four documentaries together. And that is my son, Douglas Jr. So if you see my son walking around and camera and kind of like in on you, that's because we really want to put together a nice production of this event today to share with people who weren't able to make it here. So without anything else being said, let's get on with the program. Glenn Burke playing center field tonight. His first World Series appearance. He takes the first pitch in the World Series from Don Gullett for ball one. I would describe Glenn as like the glistening mirror ball at a discotheque when the light hits it, you know, and all of these different reflections and colors flash all over the room. It is not uncommon these days for someone who is in the public eye to come forth and admit that he or she is a homosexual. But it is fairly uncommon when that person is a Major League Baseball player. I'd like you to meet Glenn Burke right now. Little looper out the center. Burke there. Game over. Now to win a pressure game. Were you traded from the Dodgers to the A's because you were gay? Um, I'm not sure. What do you think? Yeah. You know, I've been around a lot of charismatic guys, a young Magic Johnson and Kobe and all these these guys, but and just in terms of personality, I've never been around anybody who could light up a room the way Glenn could. Bert say, I cannot take it anymore, but I have to be lying. I said, I, I'm a homosexual. And then I said to myself, I used to shower with this guy almost every day. Baseball wasn't prepared for Glenn Burke. He was, a, he was a pioneer. They ran him straight out the game. Glenn was comfortable who he was. Baseball wasn't comfortable with who he was. Now you're gay first and then a baseball player second. He told me a story about a former Oakland A's and Los Angeles Dodger player living on the streets. He was on his crack, and he was a wild and woolly character. I interviewed him um, on and off about maybe a year before he died. And even though we had to take breaks because of the pain and the tears, the crying, I said to him, Glenn, you know, okay, we put in two or three days. We don't have to go on. You don't have to do this. I, I got some, some, some information that I want to find out from uh, a few of the cast members. They had a wonderful experience uh, last week. And I, I definitely want to talk to them about that experience. Last Friday night at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the Dodger organization a uh, special night for gay, lesbian, transgender, uh, uh, also for Glenn Burke. They recognized, I, I remember hearing the briefing, they apologized. This is the organization that we're in, the Dodger Stadium. I, they, I was the game at the Dodger Stadium when Glenn was playing. I hadn't been back to the Dodger Stadium since 1978. So going into that stadium person for me, the memories just were so vivid and so and in my spirit. I'm going to talk about my intellect because for the longest I couldn't stand the knowledge before playing. 
My only life to die just went to play. Went to games when he played. Hung out the whole thing. So at that stadium, and being in the, uh, the owner boxes, uh, uh, city, the, the brother threw out the first pitch. Baseball, he threw out the first pitch. So personally, for me, I was like way up here. Despising what the Dodgers, how they treat them, and what they did. I heard three things in that montage on the big screen in the Dodgers stadium. But they apologize to their family. What I want to hear is what Major League Baseball did in, you know, finally giving Glenn his, his props. What, what, what did that mean to the Burke family? At this point in time, I knew that they felt like it was a bad old. But I also always knew in the back of my mind, this probably wouldn't be done until after the sort of past. Because I think they wanted to um, respect the man that he was until the end. And um, even um, with what they done by um, recognizing him and apologizing to the family, they was also concerned about um, Suspicions about Glenn's sexuality led to a feverish effort to uncover the truth. The desire for confirmation was burning. So somebody knocked at the door, and, and I remember it was Dusty, Dusty and uh, Reggie Smith. And they came to the door, and they was like, you know, you know, we know everybody. We, we already hung out, so we, what's up, what's up? And so I remember them asking the question. They said, is Glenn gay? And I was like, oh man, you know, I was like, I'm my, my loyalty to Glenn and, and my friendship with them. And I said, well, I'm gonna tell you this. You ought to ask him. To be a friend of Glenn Burke was to risk being branded with baseball's scarlet letter. In the late seventies, the sport had few unpardonable sins, but homosexuality may have been the biggest. I remember the day he was traded I walked into the clubhouse, and, and this is a lively clubhouse, you know, for the most part. And it was, it was very quiet, and, and guys were visibly distraught over the trade. And, and that told me that my sense of how important he was to them internally was accurate. And, and I even remember a few players crying when, when they found out about it at their lockers, which is kind of stunning, you know, to see. Well, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, Al Campanis came down and they said, we just traded Glenn. And I said, Glenn, why? For who? You know, it was kind of, everybody was upset. It was Billy North who ended up becoming a good friend also on the club. But at the time, uh, the chemistry, we use that word chemistry, he, he was the guy he, that kept the chemistry going in the clubhouse. Um, and I think if everybody knows the story, I think it was other reasons why he was traded. They were really devastated that, that the life of the party was leaving. And I wrote a, a column expressing that, and it, it was not well received by Dodgers management. You don't break up, disrupt a team going as well as it was going uh, to make changes. You know what I mean? Just to be make changes. It, I didn't feel as though it was going to make us a better ball club. Billy North was not going to make us at that time uh, any better of a ball club. I thought it was uh, probably not the real reason why things happened. I don't even think they even had the term LGBTQ plus all of that. I don't think they even had that when we were doing no, this film. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, since we made this film to where we're at today now, in terms of, you know, the sports world. You being both a player, a coach, and a cast member, what, what your perspective has been, I know that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a tough guy. <laughs> no, I don't think it's changed a whole lot. Um, I see some certain organizations trying to push it. You know, the Raiders, mm -hmm. they have the defensive end that is gay. You know, and they they really pushed it. I mean, uh, he's an okay player, but they really pushed it, you know. 
nothing. So I don't think it's changed a whole bunch. I mean, he's he's low key with it. So I don't I don't, I don't think it changed too much. I think there it would be more accepting because of the culture. You know, it be it's a, it would be a lot of clamor, a lot of protests, and you know that's that you see that more. But as far as them wanting it, I, yeah, I think it's still pretty close to the same. You know, I think there's probably some still in there. They just keeping it down. They keeping it on the down low because they understand if they come out, they can make it end their career. Both Billy Martin and Glenn Burke were Berkeley High graduates. Both were fierce competitors. But the baseball world has few secrets. Once Martin learned of Burke's homosexuality, any common ground was split far apart. They get to spring training. You go out in short center field and you have an introduction to the new players who come over. So the guys who knew each other there in their little group talking and you know, hey, how you doing? How was your off season? How was your winter? And all that kind of stuff. So Billy Martin came out this morning and was introducing all the players to the uh, new players that were coming in. And then he got to Glenn and he said, oh, by the way, this is Glenn Burke, and he's a faggot. Martin didn't do anything quietly for you to hear. Everything he said was straight out of his mouth and very loud for everybody to hear. That's where he never gave Glenn a chance to judge J Glenn on being Glenn. He heard what he was supposed to be and automatically turned against him. Well, I don't want that guy at my club ball, so I don't want this. So, you know, I mean, that's how society, especially back then, uh, reacted when that happened. And that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it was. It, um, this is to uh, get shown at any film festivals. It was shown regionally, and then they liked it so much that they picked it up okay. nationally with the uh, NBC Sports Network. It should be shown on PBS for American experience now. It, it, this is history. Everybody needs to hear this story. Yeah. It's got to be distributed more widely. Because I would never heard about it unless, you know, I, I was a member of the Historical Society. Oh. It needs to be, you know, it needs to be told. Even to people like me, not necessarily uh, into sports, yeah. or not necessarily into, you know, gay, gay rights and stuff. But, you know, it, it, it's a story that needs to be told. It's a history. I wanted to kind of share something that happened while we were doing this film. And, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't make the cut. But it was, it was, it was that Glenn, while he was in Major League Baseball, he was trying to come out with the media during, you know, that mid to late 70s time period when he was a professional baseball player. He was actually trying to come out to the media, but the media refused to report that. In the media, I mean, it was like they weren't ready to, you know, announce that the Los Angeles Dodgers, which was considered America's team, you know, Steve Garvey, Dave Lowe's, uh, Bill Russell, that whole lineup, and it was like, no way is the LA Times, the LA Examiner, or any major newspaper going to allow one of the players to come out and fast forward to 2022. Can you imagine who would be trying to get that story? You know, what writer would be trying to get that story of who was going to be the first to come out? And Glenn tried to do it 50 something years ago and they refused to let him come out and believe me. So that's, that's one of the things that we have to look at you know, in terms of the whole perception in professional sports about what the media will and will not cover and what angle that the media tries to present, quote unquote, the news to us readers. Like somebody said in the film that, uh, you know, sports are always considered, you know, the very manly endeavor. And, well, a couple of things I, I just wanted to share. You know, the day after your family was honored at Dodger State, 
this little forum that we are having right now. Thank you for the people on this panel. Doug, you've been uh, gifted by God, the Creator, with a gift to put these kind of things together so it can be shared and dispensed to the public at large who might have missed some of the intricacies that you're able to bring to light. Uh, and, 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 and for that, I'm grateful. Thank you. To me, Glenn was just sort of well-rounded, you know? He got up in the morning to go check on his friends to see if they was having, you know, a good day or something like that. He didn't harbor ills and wills against people, you know? He was very inclusive about black, white. I remember, as I'm reading through his obituary, that how Paula said, as I'm reading through it, all of a sudden, I saw my name in his obituary, Glenn's obituary. I saw my name in there, and it spooked the hell out of me. I was like, what is my name doing in Glenn's obituary? <laughs> and, you know, I never got a chance to thank you or your family, but in that obituary, it was written at the very end about an event that we held for your brother. Mm -hmm. And it was at the time that we were organizing this event, it was going to be the last time that all of Glenn's friends and the public would have an opportunity to share an evening with them. Mm -hmm. And you helped me coordinate it and a few other people through mm -hmm. Athens United for Peace. Yeah. But that was one of the most special things that, that I can ever recall doing for a person. And it was very difficult, but it was a wonderful event that we held so that people could get a chance to see Glenn one last time before he passed away. And we held this event, Vince and you were there, Martin, we were all there. And I just wanted to take the opportunity Thank you for letting us do that for your brother. No yeah. Real quick, uh, this is the first time I've seen this film, and I'm glad I saw it in this form. Uh, it's wonderful. Thanks to everybody on the panel. Special thanks to Doug. Doug, I thought, and Douglas as well, I thought Grandpa's film was your best film. But I, I can't wait to see what you're going to do in the future. Okay, good man. It was great. Huh? It was great. Was it fun? It was great. Did we do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> People enjoyed it. See, I thought it would be better if we did like the piano. That's why I hustled up. No, it was great. I mean, it was incredible to hear, the, to hear these voices, you know? I mean, kind of you know, like let them get things started. Yeah. You know, get their Because to me, like, it really was revisiting out. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Put that place to do it. Get back at home. Yeah.